Perhaps your naturopath or integrative medicine doctor told you that you have low stomach acid, or maybe you've done some Google sleuthing and you've determined that this is something you should pay attention to and try out. Either way, you're in the right place. Let's get started and talk all about low stomach acid. Now, here are some tips that I can give you for making your own stomach acid on the cheap slash free with your own body and not relying on stupid stomach acid pills for the rest of your life. First and foremost, I wanna show you what I call digestion dominoes. Dominoes in the sense of not the actual game, but how little kids play with dominoes. And what this is, is we think of digestion as a north to south process and also like a big chain of dominoes, where if the first domino doesn't fall, if this one doesn't fall and tip over this one, then none of the other ones down the line are gonna move. So you really need to think from a top-down approach, starting at the very first stage of digestion. Now, sometimes people in my profession, in nutritional therapy, for example, or integrative medicine, will talk about stomach acid as the first domino, and that's not exactly accurate. Stomach acid is a couple dominoes down. The first thing, as you can see by my little smiley face, is first you're gonna see the food, and you're gonna smell the food, and you're gonna think about the food, and you're gonna feel the hunger, and you're gonna think about how delicious that food is gonna be. And you're gonna smell it, and your brain is going to register, ooh, hey, we're kinda hungry, and we're getting ready to eat. This is gonna be rad. So really, first and foremost, you need to get your brain prepared to eat. And what you could do, there's great books on mindful eating and intuitive eating, but also just being present and slowing down. Just Americans in particular, we are so afflicted by this. We eat on the run, we eat a granola bar in the car, and we scarf a Starbucks, and we, we just shove things in our face, and it's not thoughtful, and it's not slow, and we just are not thoughtful in our eating nine times out of 10, and I'm guilty of this too. So first and foremost, if you can get your brain online and just think the thoughts of, hey, that food really smells good. This is gonna taste really good. I need to remember this recipe. Or even if you're somebody who prays, pray before your meal. Sit at the table. Try to eat your meals at a table if you can and not on the go or in a car or in a whatever. Like try to actually sit and be present with your meal. Next, to get that brain logged on, you can actually just smell your food. Go ahead and actually hold the plate up to your nose or hold the bite up to your nose and take a whiff and think about what flavors and what smells and what complexities you smell in that food. Again, you're just getting your brain logged on and saying, hey, delicious food is coming our way. And that lets the brain know, oh, hey, we need some digestive juices. I'd better start making stomach acid ASAP. And that goes for the other digestive juices too. Finally, I'm gonna put taste and chew. Actually take a moment to taste your and chew your food. This is a little trick I picked up. Uh, my mom had a ruin Y gastric bypass surgery in 2008. And one of the things that they taught the gastric bypass patients at the time was to chew your food way more than you think you need to. And I have a lot of my patients do this and it's really, really eye-opening and I've done it myself too. The gastric bypass doctors told my mom at the time that she should chew, she should chew every bite of food 30 times. If you've never tried to do this, it is incredibly hard to do. You're gonna really want to swallow the food prior to 30 chews. But what I tell patients is that if you're eating meat or something that's a little bit tougher, try to aim for that 30 chew per bite rule. If you're eating something that could be gummed down a little bit easier, if you're eating like broccoli or rice or something that doesn't have as much texture and toughness to it, then you could probably get by with 10 chews. But if you pay attention and just take note of this for yourself, I notice when I'm not really, really conscious about it, I maybe chew things like rice and vegetables twice, maybe three times, and I chew meat probably six or seven times as a baseline if I'm not thinking of it. But if I check in and I slow down and I really think about chewing the heck out of my food and enjoying those tastes and enjoying those flavors, it does really help with digestion later on. Again, it's giving your brain time to catch up and make more digestive juices. And it's giving your stomach a little bit of time to process the food bit by bit instead of all at once in one big mound of food. So we're gonna try to get our brain logged on. We're gonna smell and we're gonna taste the food. We're gonna look at the food. We're gonna think about the food. 
be present and mindful and eat at a damn table and not in a car. Smell the food, taste and chew the heck out of your food to the point where it's a gross paste by the time you swallow it. Then we can start thinking about acid. Stomach acid is the next domino in the equation. And then after that is going to be gallbladder and pancreas as far as digestive juices are concerned. So things that we could do directly for stomach acid production, there are a lot of herbs that can help with this. Um, when I do prescribe betaine HCL, I also combine it with a product that has some gentian root in it, which is a bitter herb that can help stimulate stomach acid production. So that is one avenue. Digestive bitters can be helpful for some people. I don't know, I'm, I'm training to be an herbalist. I'm not officially an herbalist yet, but I haven't really preached the gospel of bitters quite yet, like a lot of herbalists do. But for some people that can really make a huge difference. Other things to keep in mind is that you need zinc to make stomach acid. So if you are zinc deficient, you'd be hard pressed to make HCL worth a darn. Uh, you need a lot of vitamins and minerals and protein and, and things of that nature anyway. And also histamine is involved in this process. So if you are a histaminic allergic person with asthma and eczema and allergies, or if you have mast cell activation or mastocytosis or something of that nature or hives, you could start thinking a little bit more about maybe you have some wacky histamine stuff going on and that is keeping you from making the right amount of stomach acid and, and getting your acid levels up. And then finally, there is a really important one that's often neglected and that is the vagus nerve, which I started to spell incorrectly. The vagus nerve, is in charge of all your innards. It's the biggest nerve in the body. It comes out of your brainstem, down your neck, and then goes into all of your innards and organs. And it goes to the stomach and it's the vagus nerve, those parasympathetic nervous system fibers that help stimulate the stomach and the pancreas and gallbladder and intestines to make all of their juices and do cool anti-inflammatory, good for you digesting things. So there's an awful lot that could be done to rehab your vagus nerve and give it TLC. And I think that that is also a piece of how the other dominoes fit into it. Yes, you're preparing your brain for food coming down the pipe. And yes, you're signaling to your brain, hey, I want you to make digestive juices. And that does happen via the vagus nerve. But vagus nerve fibers are intrinsically parasympathetic, which means, which means that you have to be in a rest and digest state to activate your vagus nerve in the first place. So if you are running late for a meeting and you're catching a granola bar on the go and you're shoving your kids out the door to school and you're always frazzled, you're just not gonna activate that parasympathetic nervous system. You're not gonna get the vagus nerve logged online and you're not going to digest your dang food. So rather, if you could be present and if you could slow down and just sit for a moment and just have some quiet time, or some activity or something in your life where you can close out all of the bullshit in the world and just focus on your food so that your body can do its job for you. If you can log into that parasympathetic nervous system, you're gonna get that vagus nerve fired up and you're going to get stomach acid production and juices produced again, finally. And you could do it for free or very cheap. How much would a zinc supplement actually cost you? Very little modulating your allergic response. Now that's another video for another day, but that could be done relatively cheaply and certainly just being present and slowing down with your food won't cost you a nickel. So those are some of my favorite things that I have my patients do to help stimulate their own digestive juices so that they don't have to be as reliant on external stomach acid supplements. Walking for 15 minutes prior to a meal has been shown to stimulate digestive juices like bile and stomach acid. So that's a really great free way to stimulate your digestive juices if you just get a bit of physical activity in. I live in the South and we are in the summer now and it's disgustingly humid. So walking outside after or right before lunch, for example, doesn't sound super appealing, but you could certainly do a bit of yoga or a bit of jumping jacks or trampoline or whatever you have access to. Run in place, do a little cardio, whatever you have access to, just get your heart pumping a little bit and get your nervous system engaged before you eat your meal and that'll help you make some of your own digestive juices. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. 
doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.